Hello, welcome. Today I'm talking about Isotope. Of course, RX11 released a couple days ago. And, you know, I want to see what it does. If it, is it good for me? And I tell you, I already have it. I have a weird relationship with Isotope. Maybe some of you also have that. In regards of the loyalty discounts, which seem to be more expensive than the actual products or the, you know, some of the bundles and, and, and the upgrade, you know, frequency. And I, I put a video out uh, about Ozone, the last upgrade, which I didn't feel was justifying the $150 price tag. So I did not upgrade. Now, RX is very similar. I had version 9. And when 10 uh, got introduced, I didn't want to shell out the 150 bucks and said, no, I'm going to wait until 11 and then decide if it's worth it and if there's any new elements and changes. So a couple months ago, the first ads came in onto, you know, the social media. And I saw one that says, you know, buy RX10 now upgrade and you get RX11 for free when they release it. And so I clicked on the button and I looked at the price and it was $95. And I thought, you know what? From nine to 11 for a hundred bucks. Okay, that seems to be fair. That's $50 per version more. And I did that. So I downloaded 10 first and I now recently got 11. If you want to see all the features, what the, uh, you know they can do, there are a lot of videos from Isotope and other people. But I want to so show you a couple of things side by side. So if you look at the screen, on this side here, this is RX10, and on this side is RX11. And I uploaded, uh, I loaded in the same clip, the Improv Ellen flag, which is in the Isotope uh, folder you can experiment with. So if you take a quick look, it pretty much looks the same. The, uh, the platform. Let's make this go just down a little bit so now it's even. Uh, it's the same look. There are a couple new items, not that many, but there are a few, and you can see them over here in blue because I already opened them. So one of them is the dialog isolate, which you could not get. It's not over here, right? So this is new, and this is how it's gonna look like. And this is pretty uh interesting plugin. Uh, we have you know waves put out a plugin to remove reverb or to remove the noise and then you have to load in both of them and there's a couple of other ones out there too so now it's built in here in rx11 and if i play you this very noisy clip which means that you agree with what the person tells you all right a lot of background noise right so if we keep the voice at zero and let's say i want to get the noise down 24 db let's try 24 and also make the room less reverbery. I go down to 24 also, and now I'll click preview. And you add to it. It's also a great skill for learning how to pivot on the spot. Wow, I mean, that's like- Add to it. It's also a great- That's pretty amazing. If I leave the room alone and just go down with the noise, let's try uh, infinite. Great skill for learning how to pivot on the spot, think outside the box, think creatively, team build, and all those- so that's very handy. And of course, you have to watch about the transients. So be careful how far you go down. But this is super easy now to clean up your track, uh, you know, within seconds. You don't have to open multiple plugins to de reverb here. And, you know, and uh, on this side, you have to use either the spectral denoiser or the voice denoiser. And so there will be two, you know, steps involved. Now you have the dialog isolate, boom, come in and here you go, ready to go. So I like that, nice addition. And also keep in mind, all those plugins on this side, as you know, run in your DAW, which is great. You can run it in anything, uh, Logic, Pro Tools, uh, you know, Cubase, uh, whatever you have, and you can use that plugin immediately. That is great. So that's number one, that's new. That was a dialog isolate, I leave it blue so you can see it better. Also, a new plugin is the Loudness Optimizer. And that one takes a little time to understand what it really does. So let me show this. So if you open the Loudness Control, you know by clicking on your audio file, it will analyze your overall loudness, right? It takes measurements between the softest and the loudest parts for the entire song or piece of music, and it gives you an idea that currently our music file, this is the band song, sits at integrated minus 17.6, short term is minus 15.6, right? And if I switch to my uh, voiceover file, uh, you see it's different numbers, okay? Now, what? how they explain this, the loudness optimizer, if you click on here, comes up like this. 
And they say, when loudness gets measured, some of the softer parts, if they fall below the threshold, a certain threshold, which is, I guess, universal standard in those algorithms they use at Spotify and YouTube, it will not be included in the calculation. So if you look at the, uh, the graph down here, this is now the, uh, the uh, voiceover. Everything below here in the gray is below the threshold, which could be, you know, just silence or uh, the fan, very super quiet, right? So all of this will not be calculated. And that's why it says here only 92% have been measured. And that's why it gives you, um, you know, uh, an idea of what is not you know, being calculated, which means if you have, a, let's say, a band file like this, and you can see here is a little dip, right? Vocal solo, and then the band comes back in. So this is down here. You know, it's minimal, but it is at minus, you know, 26, minus 30. So it will not be used in the overall calculation you see here. And they say we can optimize this. So the small, the soft part gets, maybe if we bring this up a little bit, then the uh, loudness control will say, oh, I can see there's more dynamics, right? They just don't ignore the bits here. The ending, you know, that's always a, a drop anyway. But let's say here. So what you do is you click the learn button and look, it actually recommends a boost of 6 dB. And if I click render, as you can see, it moved that little segment, this segment here above the threshold here. So now, on my uh, loudness control, I got a more accurate, you know, uh, loudness reading. If you have a piece with lots of dynamics and there's some really loud parts, and if it's really quiet in between, maybe the loudness, uh, you know, algorithm says, oh, this is a pretty loud file and it's going to just bring it down on Spotify, right? So with the optimizer, you can raise the entire file a little bit. So the, the soft parts also going to be recognized in the um, calculation. That's what it is. So this is the loudness optimizer. Pretty interesting. Takes a little while to understand and learn, but definitely worth uh, to check it out. So on the website, they also claim they improved the music rebalance algorithms. So here we have them, both uh, plugins, the music rebalance in 10 and the one in 11. You can see that it has changed a little bit, uh, more colors. You can see actually now uh, meters. Uh, you see values, uh, sensitivity uh, dial. There was only the separation tool over here. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. So let's find out what's going on here. Let's take this music band file, and this is how it sounds uh, with the vocal. All right, I moved the vocal all the way down to, you know, back to the bottom, infinite, and let's see how this sounds without the vocal. It's not bad. I could still hear occasionally some bleed through, right? Okay, let's take a look at this one. 11, here's the file. All right, good, here comes the preview. Pretty good, pretty good, stop that. Uh, I think, yeah, definitely better, clearer. Still, I think uh, spectral layers is better, in my opinion. But uh, it's a start here for RX. If you wanna do some quick things, uh, uh, cleaning up or removing vocals and take it somewhere else. So yeah, definitely an improvement from uh, 10 to 11. Here you have it. Now, the other big news you might've seen already announced on other channels is of course the mid-side mode. And as you know, usually everything is stereo, left and right channel, right? And if I, let's go to the uh, music uh, track. If I go to view and you click on channel mode, you see a new option, mid-side. If, if you go to 10 under view, see it's not there, right? So this is new. This is, uh, needs to be really, you know, baked into your program. Uh, different calculations happen there. 
So let's do that. Let's switch over channel mode to the mid side. And now you can have, you can have uh, control over each different area. You can look just at the mids, which on a record might be, you know, most your, your kick and your drums and everything more in the center of the signal between the two speakers, right? And then you can also check out the side. You have to click again. Here we go. So now it's the information on the way out. And if you discover something you want to change, you can apply all those uh, plugins now individually to either the mid or the side. So one more thing that's really new, the repair assistant. In version 10, it looked like that. It had those, you know, uh, different plugins integrated in one big window, de harsh, de click, uh, de reverb, de clip, de noise. And then you can go up and down uh, how much you want to do this by yourself, or you can have the learn function go. You first you pick your, your source, this would be voice, and then you click learn. The machine now starts analyzing your recording, your wave flag file or whatever, MP3, whatever you put in there. And after a couple of seconds, it's going to recommend you to you to use a little bit de a little bit of reverb, some denoising. So this is the file. Creatively, team build, and all those things that we need in our real life. All right, they left some room tone. If you want to get rid of more of the room tone, then you can increase, of course, you know, the slider and get that up, right? So that's the repair assistant in version 10. Now in 11, uh, it's a little bit bigger. They took away some of those functions here with the instruments. You only have two options. You got the voice and the music. So if we go to the voice and now we do the learn button, it's doing the same thing. It takes pretty much the same amount, you know, depending on your CPU. Here it is. Maybe it was a little faster than the version 10 possible. Let's hear it. What Prob is yes and. All right which means that you agree with what the person tells you and you add to it. It's all not bad. Let me check this again. I was at 57 originally recommended. Lives as well. When you work with others and you work off of their idea. Also a great skill for learning how to pivot on the spot, think outside the box, think create. So what I'm hearing is that the voice is a little more clear in this repair assistant uh, recommendation, right? Uh, they, for some reason, I, it's still, it, I mean, it's cleaned up. The background also seems to be a little more quiet, not that much, but definitely better. Ideas, um, not only is it fun and stress busting, but um, not only is it fun and stress busting, but it's comical. Yeah, definitely. So you can hear uh, the the voice is clearer. It's more upfront a little bit, and that's the recommendation. I haven't even started messing it myself, and also it gives you a graph to see what what it does a little bit on on the tone. And so yeah, so I think this is interesting. Uh, also great results. I do like the dialogue isolate right as I showed you earlier. So there are a couple. As I said, there's four new elements, and of course the mid side mode, which is uh, also great. So. Uh, for $100, I think it's definitely worth, for me it was worth, going from 9 to 11. Let me know in the comments if you upgraded, if you had version 10 and you think 11 is not that much for you, you don't need all those couple of things. Uh, maybe 12 will then be the next big revelation of AI. But otherwise, I think uh, for the price I paid, it was definitely worth an upgrade and it's going to helped me doing my, my work and it definitely improved, I think, from version 9. So here you have it. Okay, thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.